Hello, my name is David Hillier and I will be giving a short video on the investment appraisal method internal rate of return and this comes from my textbook corporate finance and the specific section of the book is uh, section 6.5 and chapter uh, chapter six. So I'm going to be very focused in this, this lecture and speak only about the internal rate of return. I'll give a little insight into the theory and then I'll show you a number of different ways in which you can calculate the internal rate of return, specifically with uh, the spreadsheet Excel. So the internal rate of return asks the question, is the return on the specific project greater than the discount rate that should be applied to the project? The concept of discount rate is the return that you would expect from other financial securities having the same risk. And that is the normal discount rate that we use in any uh, of our NPV and investment appraisal methods. So we're looking for the answer to the question, is the internal rate of return, the return on the project, greater than the discount rate? If it is, we'll accept the project. If it isn't, we'll reject the project. Starting off with a very simple example, um, we have two cash flows. One is uh, 100 uh, outflow and after one period, we have an inflow of 110. Now, immediately you can see that the return on that investment is 10%. So, you know, we know that, so it's quite it's quite intuitive. What we're going to say is, um, we, we're going to say, right, okay, how do we calculate the internal rate of return? Now, intuitively, we've already come up with the internal rate of return. The return on the project's 10%. But we need to try and do a calculation because clearly this is simple. We're going to have situations where we have many cash flows. So to start off, we say, right, well, let's set the MPV of the project equal to zero. And once we set the, the MPV equal to zero, we then solve for R. Looking at this, if, if I'll just do a very simple uh, analysis. So we've got the cash outflow minus C0 plus C1 divided by 1 plus R. Now, we're going to want to set that equal to zero. Why? Because that is the MPV here. Minus C0 plus C1 um, divided by R. And I wonder if I, what I'll do is here just to show that, uh, I'll just put that there, a little apostrophe and then that treats what I typed in as a, a text. So that is set equal to zero. If that's set equal to zero then what we're actually saying is that C0 is equal to C1 divided by 1 plus R because we're taking the C0 C over to the other side. So we're finding R that basically or the, R or the internal rate of return that equates the present value of the future cash flows to the a cash outflow just now. And that's what we're doing with internal rate of return. Uh, what is the return that equates the investment to the, the cash inflows? If we were going to then manipulate that formula uh, uh, even more, and I'll do it in stages, one over R is equal to C1, divided by C0. And that then tells us that R is equal to C1 divided by C0 all um, minus 1. And that is just the return. So the return on investment is the internal rate of return. And we've shown that using the first principles. So, we want to find the R that sets the MPV equal to zero. And to do that in a simple case, then all you need to do is, uh, if we had to go through the calculation, we would say, well, it's 110, because that's C1, divided by 100, and we take 1 away from that. And you'll find that it's 0.1, which if we put it into percentage, it's 10%. And that's the internal rate of return here. Okay, 
Now we're going to move on to a more complex example, and it's more complex because there are more than one cash flow. When you've got that situation, there's, there's three methods that you can use to find internal rate of return. If you're going to be using um, pen and paper, and that normally takes happens when you are sitting an exam, then unfortunately the only method you can use is trial and error. Now with my students, I, I say to the students, look, when you uh, are doing uh, the calculations, we want to know that you know how to uh, find internal rate of return. When I'm not interested in you knowing how to uh, do trial and error. So I only look for uh, the, I suppose, a whole number. So if you come up with a value of 11.4%, then I'm only really interested in you finding either it's between 11 and 12%. If we were to look at this one then, let's just uh, do this. So we can put time here and we can put the cash flow here. We start off at zero because that's when the outflow takes place and the outflow is minus 200 and then the inflows are 100 every year. And we're wanting to find the return on this investment or the internal rate of return. So how do we do it? Well, we can uh, use this approach and say, well, the we're wanting to equate the present value of these inflows to that outflow. Uh, or we can just do an MPV and set the MPV equal to zero. And that, that's what we'll do. So we want to find the value of R on, and we'll be specific, we'll call it internal rate of return. Let's start off with a value of 40%, something crazy. And we're wanting to find the value of R that gives us the MPV equal to zero. Now, in an exam, you're going to have to do these calculations. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find the present value of each of the cash flows. And I will take you through each of the, these steps. So it's minus 200 divided by 1 plus R. And I'll put that as an absolute cell reference to the power 0. If I copy this down, you'll end up getting the present value of each of these cash flows. So what's the MPV? The MPV is equal to the sum of the present values. And you've got minus. Now, I would expect it to have a negative MPV because the internal rate of return estimate that I've put in is, is very high. When you're doing trial and error, if you're uh, you end up with a negative NPV, it means that the estimate is too high. So you want to reduce that. So let's go down to 20%. Well, here we go. It's uh, positive. So that means that our estimate is too low. It's pretty close to 10, but I'm going to choose 30%. Again, in the exam, you're going to have to recalculate each of these. Uh, so it's not, it's between 20 and 30 Let's do 25%. Aha, getting quite close. Still a bit too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 24%. Oh, still too high. Let's do 23%. Okay, so the internal rate of return is between 23 and um, 23 and 24%. And that's what you would be asked to do in an exam. So that's the first method of finding the internal rate of return. The next method is to use the formula. Excel has a formula and it's the internal rate of return formula. So we do IRR and we just highlight the values. Uh, very straightforward. And we're left with 23%. I'm going to just put it up to uh, two decimal places because uh, just for accuracy. And as you see, um, our initial trial and, trial and error estimate of between 23 and 24% is replicated here and the actual value is 23.38%. Now, the next thing, uh, or the third method I'm going to use is a method called Goal Seek or you can use Solver. The, I use the Mac Excel and the approach that I use to get Goal Seeker Solver is different. Um, what I would do is I would go into tools and then go seek. I think I'm not sure, but I think on the the uh, PC or the the Windows version, it's different. It's either through data or tools. But what you do is you look for go seek, and our technique is we want to set the cell equal 
to zero. Right, because it's we want to find the value of the IRR that sets that, that value to zero. So what I do is I'm setting this cell equal to zero by changing that cell. And using that method, we come up with uh, the same. So three methods to calculate the internal rate of return. Uh, one, when you don't have access to a computer. Another one, uh, using the formula. And the third one is using a tool in Excel, which is called GoalSeek. Now, you may say, well, what, what is this method like? Well, if you've come from a mathematical background, when you have the, in this case, you've got four cash flows, then that is effectively a polynomial. And you can actually set the, the formula. If I was to do this as a formula, I would say... Um, 200 uh, plus, well, it's minus 200, sorry, minus 200 plus 100 times 1 over 1 plus IRR plus 100 divided by 1 over 1 plus IRR squared plus 100 divided by 1 over 1 plus IRR cubed. Okay. And that's what you would write as a polynomial. But if you set x equal to 1 divided by 1 plus IRR, then, and this is just for the mathematicians out there, you actually change this into a polynomial. Well, it's, it's a polynomial anyway, but it's a much easier expression. It's equal to minus 200 plus 100x plus 100x squared plus 100x cubed. And the... And so what we're doing when we find the, the IRR is we set MP this equal to zero. And so then we're actually finding the root of the polynomial. So the internal rate of return is the root of the polynomial. And that's important for our next video when I talk about the weaknesses and the drawbacks to using the internal rate of return. So thank you very much.